Hey guys, Mike here. So, oh boy, we got a very, very important week coming up here. It's going to be extremely volatile. There's no doubt about that because remember, we're kicking off earnings. We're going to go through that. Some big, huge economic data coming out this week that will absolutely drive the markets one way or the other, depending on how the data actually plays out and depending, more importantly, how the market wants to absorb it. We got to look at that last week with all the economic floodgates opening up and the market was all over the place, right? And so the first thing we got to figure out is the S&P, right? I mean, the S&P had a huge day Friday and understand what we're up against this week and what bulls are trying to do here. And you're looking at, it doesn't really look bearish, you know, you could say, because obviously it broke out of the range it had been in right there, but it runs up against the 50 moving average and the 100 moving average, right? So that will absolutely be resistance. You got that big gap above, which is only like two and a half percent above it which is nothing in this market and you can see down the bottom down there you got a macd's fix and do a bullish crossover you got the rsi creeping over 50 right there on the daily and so those are not bearish things so if this market wants to push up it can push up and you know another thing the bulls are trying to defend because they know what will happen if, if this does happen is the weekly 200 moving average right we bounced off of it peaked down below it there for a minute but they know if that crosses that 200 week of moving average. We're heading south and we're heading south fast. Anytime it crosses below the 200, I don't care if it's on the weekly, daily, nothing good happens below the 200. That's when you get these just absolutely massive moves down normally because it's going to kick out, goes in. A lot of and the, and the bears are going to absolutely take control of the market and start shorting the daylights out of it. And of course, what are we looking at this week? Earnings. And the big one to start out with, I think it's going to be KB Homes on Wednesday because those stocks have been going up. Even though the housing market looks like straight garbage right now. But then Friday's the big one. This is where all the big firms, Bank of America, City, Wells Fargo, BlackRock, even got Delta reporting. So will they be bragging again about, you know, how, how much they're raising ticket prices on us and we're still traveling and all that good stuff. And, you know, we get to see on fourth quarter because you can look at the fourth quarter earnings. And the important thing is if you look at the fourth quarter earnings estimates, you can see they've came down negative 4.1%, right? They're in the negative and you can see they've been dropping since 2020 i mean every time they report and so that's the estimates and if you're new here please hit that subscribe button really appreciate it and if you're getting anything out of this please hit the like and think about sharing the video guys and as i said before the analysts have no idea what they're doing so who knows if that's even correct but there's no doubt why is the market held up why in the world do you you know try to sell us down to new lows when earnings is coming up just wait and see what happens right and stuff like that and we got other economic data coming out which we're fixing to talk about and that's this and when you look at this economic data i mean tuesday you're gonna have a couple you know interesting things nfib small business optimism red book retail sales november wholesale trades nobody cares about that wednesday mortgage applications probably not gonna be great but the big one there it is thursday cpi right this is gonna be the big one it's gonna shift markets in one direction or the other depending if we hit the actual mark they're looking for or come in below it, which we had the last couple of times, and you know the market's gonna move. If we come in under, boom, we're rocketing or even at it. And then if we come on, you know, a little bit above it, we'll have to see how the market wants to do it. Friday, if you wanna know about Canadian existing home sales, you can. Uh, you know, import price index, people might look at, but don't forget too, what's happening this week. They're gonna be rolling out Fed speakers like crazy. Even Jerome Powell's gonna speak tuesday and we'll get to see what they have to say i expect them to be bearish of course because they don't want the market to get out of hand and start taking off but here's what inflation just as a reminder has done over the last year you can see we peaked in june and started dropping pretty good right down 0.6 down 0.2 down 0.1 now all of a sudden october started picking up momentum to the downside dropping 0 0.5 0 0.6 and the expectation is 6.6 .6, so another 0.5 percent drop right there which is doable. And depending on that number and earnings, you know, one of two things is going to happen. The S&P is going to go up. Everything's going to go up like this. Or if it's bad, we're going down. And we go down, we're going to start taking out uh, moving averages. We're going to start taking out support levels and everything else. Algo is going to kick in. We're just going to take all of them out right there and start heading towards new lows. Uh, probably at that point in time. And one thing that's happening right now, some, somebody sent me a video um, in the Patreon about this, which was this argument now that we're not in a bear market anymore. We're actually in a bull market, just tech stocks are not, right? Tech stocks are underperforming everything. And the argument is, and I can understand the argument, which is, look what's happened to the Dow, right? So the Dow stocks are the leader right now. It's only 6% off an all-time high. At this point in time, it's uh, you know above its 200, broke out of the downward trend, and all that good stuff. But what's what's leading the way? Energy, 
healthcare, right? That's what's really leading the way. And then, of course, your, uh, your precious metals and things like that are also di uh, doing that as well. But, you know, so they're sitting there saying, well, those are in a bull market. That's not in a bear market. We broke out of the bear market, right? Just the everybody's looking at the tech stocks going, well, they're still in a bear market. So everything must be in a bear market. And so I, I get what they're saying. But plus the argument is that when you go in a bear market, like the previous bear market that came out into a bull market, whatever the leader is coming, you know, into the bear market is never the leader coming out of that bear market. Right. And then if it led coming out of the previous bear market, which the real bear market would be, oh, wait, really, if you're, if you're looking at that, that market, which what was it? It was tech. Well, now that's going to switch and tech is not going to be the leader coming out of this bear market. It'll be energy or something else, healthcare or something like that. Right. And the other one that's going to be leading as well is going to be China because they were ahead of us at getting destroyed. Their own government basically destroyed and attacked all their uh, tech stocks and everything else. And so, you know, and that's why, and so over there, what people are thinking it's going to be the tech stocks over there that are actually going to be leading the way. And, you know, to kind of show you a little bit about that and stuff, let me know in the comments what you think about that. Are we in a, in a new bull market now or are we still in the bear market? What do you, what do you think? And, you know, this, this just came out today and you will see this over and over, but China reopens borders and final farewell to zero COVID. And so now they've cut back on everything else. And so here comes this. So, of course, you know, we were talking about this um, the other day. And I was like, well, when you look at it, the China ETF, the Internet ETF, is base, has been basing out since March of 2022, so 10 months. And it's crossed a 20-week, 30-week, and 40-week moving average now. And you can see that right there, it basing out since March and crossing all those moving averages, which, of course, is bullish. Now, RSI obviously looks extremely bullish. And then just going, just... I always like to look at the 30-week myself, but you can look, pick whatever you want. You can see right there, I mean, that's 10 months, right, of basing out. And it started getting sold off before most of the American uh, companies did, right? So they destroyed Bob and all this stuff. You didn't see Apple, Microsoft, Google, any of them sell off until really 2022 hit. And so and you can see when it crosses this 30-week moving average, normally you get a really nice move. See, that's basing out right there. And then we cross. You come back a little bit, you'll see it's basing out right there. And then you get across, and it's usually a very powerful move up. And so they don't really have the overhead resistance anymore because even on the daily, they've already broken above all the moving averages versus what our big techs behemoths have uh, to deal with, right? And if you look at Baba, you can see a lot of these are trying to go from stage one uh, to stage two. You got JD, and stage two is the one that you really get the big move up. But still, to me, these are still, to me, trying to form stage ones. But that's you know your opinion. But this one broke out of the downward trend channel right there. Uh, you go over to uh, what Baidu. We'll bring that one up. You can see this one right here, still in the channel, descending channel, uh, right there, right at the very top of it. We'll see if it breaks out. But that's just a few of them uh, you can see. Versus when you go into you know our indexes, you got the S&P obviously still in this downward trend, still has not broke out of that, even though I have it on here for you. But here's the 30-week moving average on the weekly, and you can see it's still not above it. Uh, it's actually right up against it right now. If you go on the Nasdaq 100, obviously that's tech. Uh, definitely below it for sure. And it's actually testing that channel right there, which I've had there for a long time. And that was where we were at. That's the channel we were moving up in uh, from like 2016 on right there. And so it's sitting right on top of right there. Will we fall back into it or bounce? We'll have to see. But again, that's nowhere. That's definitely not a stage one. There's just no way stage one. It's like still like it's in a stage four to me. But um, again, you go into the Dow though, different, right? It's broke out of the channel, retested the channel, kept going. It's uh, pretty far above the 30 week now after rejecting off of it multiple times. And again, a stage one can take a long time uh, to base out. And it's really, it, it's kind of hard to say, okay, we're in stage one, we're in stage two, right? And so, cause it can go up and down, like all those, you know, something can happen in China. I mean, they could do something crazy, invade Taiwan and boom, what do you think is gonna happen to their their uh, companies over there on the stock market. It's going to tank, right? I mean, anything can happen, right? So you just don't know about that. And plus, you, you can never predict what the Chinese government's going to do. Right now, they're opening up, whatever. But if something bad happens, you know, you're right back to where it's at. But, you know, again, come back to our stock market. That's the argument now is, is the Dow, the Dow stocks and stuff like this. That's going to be the leaders. It's going to be energy and healthcare and maybe even uh, precious metals, that kind of stuff. Are those going to be the leaders coming out of this whole thing? And then tech lag right and i'm gonna i'm gonna put together some stuff because even you know people always get kind of take everything with a grain of salt right but the people you hear making this argument a lot of them you can tell there's i guarantee they were not in the market before 08 i must guarantee it 
Two, again, when they talk, you can just see there's this almost underestimation of like, well, how, how if, if what got us to all those all-time highs, right, were all the stimulus and all the Fed propping up everything, well, how in the world are we getting back there without all that, right? Where's that going to come from? And so that's a whole other thing, you know, people are trying to figure out because we're still trying to figure out what the E is, the earnings on everything, right? And so, you know, I, I get where they're coming from. I just feel like it's this is one of those things I think they're underestimating certain things, but they also make some good points on other things, okay? And so I get it, and that's one of the discussions we've been having uh, in the Discord. When you try to make a list of, you know, stocks you really want to get into, and the stocks I'm looking at, if they're not basing out, then they're not getting my attention. If I see a base out, and again, you look at stocks, if you're looking at soft or any kind of, like, tech stocks, you know, you can look at Shopify versus Amazon, right, e-commerce. A lot of the big money going to try to, you know, the, again, the ones coming out of the last bear market, like it was Amazon, it's grown a lot, right? But understand, is it going to be the leader coming out of here? Or are they going to start picking all these other e-commerce companies that are they're smaller? They're kind of in the position Amazon was way back in the day before they became this behemoth. And so there's a lot more room for growth, right? And then you've got to look at that. What's the next Google? What's the next Microsoft? What's the next Apple? And all this other stuff. That's what big money's going to look for. But they're also going to look for ones that are based now. You look at a Shopify, for example, and I'm not telling you anything about fundamentals. I'm talking about just the chart. That thing's been basing out for weeks upon weeks. You could even say months, right? You look at a Roblox, which is in obviously gaming, right? It's been basing out for months, okay? Versus Amazon, where's the base? I don't see no base, you know? Every time you think it's going to take off, it comes right back down in the 80s, you know? And so that's what, what you're looking at right now. That's just kind of the game. Uh, everybody's playing here trying to figure it out. And so and sometimes it's a guessing game. You don't know. But again, there's a bull market everywhere, okay? And then, of course, the other thing is, What's going on with housing? What's going to go on with the housing market? Is the recession going to be bad? Is it not going to be bad? Because everybody thinks about it. And when you look at where we're at, you look at any fear and greed index, the fear and greed index I, I look at, we're right dead in the middle, right? Anything above like 75, 80 is considered like a, a lot of greed, right? Anything considered, usually if you're down below between like 30 to zero is, you know, a lot of fear, but we're right in the dang middle. And so it's like, so it's not an extremely bearish sentiment going on not extremely bullish it's just right there trying people trying to figure out how is this market reacting off all this data and we got all this data coming out so how is fourth quarter earnings going to look nobody knows until we see it right how is cpi are we going to continue to have these big drops downs because eventually you would think like anything else we're going to get into a range where it's a lot harder to keep going down like that right and in that range people are picking between like five and six where you get kind of stuck right the sticky uh, inflation that people talk about like rents and things like that and so, you know, it's just a lot of questions, a lot of question marks, right? Anybody tell you they have all the answers, run, hide from them, uh, unsubscribe, whatever, but because they're dangerous, you know, but, and, and also it's different if you're looking at it as a trader and an investor, a trader saying, well, just trade what's right in front of you, ignore the noise, an investor, a lot of them saying, man, that's a lot of things that people ignored 2022 and it wrecked them, by the way. But I also read that like retail investors, while we haven't had the capitulation, you haven't seen just this major drop and it's going back to test the new lows, is because retail put 2.9 trillion into the stock market from 2020 into 2022, buying all the dips and everything else, but only sold like 100 billion or something, you know. And honestly, looking at the comments, emails, people in the Discord, people I know, I can believe it because a lot of people have rode these stocks down to like 90% down, some even more. So if they hadn't sold by now, you know, they're really going to sell now. They endured all that pain, you know, and so that's that's the other thing. You have to, in order to get to test the lows, make new lows, people have to sell. And the other thing is options, obviously, I've showed you, is just running the market right now. These these same day expiration options are shifting everything around. And so and it's kind of making a mess of it, right? And so that's why, again, this is the most orderly sell off bear market you've ever seen if we're still in a bear market right so let me know in the comments what you think just putting that out there to you food for thought again be data driven and i'll end up seeing you tomorrow